Okay, we are now ready to enter the Black Scholes Merton model. In this course, we use the three names of the scholars that greatly contributed to the field. It is true that Black and Scholes are the guys that are very well known for the Black and Scholes theorem we will consider from the asset pricing point of view. So as the tool, as the machinery that allows us to price securities and assets on the market under certain conditions that we will specify. But Robert Merton uh, contributed a lot to the field just by focusing on another aspect of the problem, which is the, the one of credit risk. And in fact, Merton's model is the prototype, is the most important model in credit risk when we speak of structural models of default. And you will see if you attend quantitative risk management that it will be a very, very important model for us. In any case, independently, Black and Scholes and Merton obtain very similar results. That's why uh, in 1997, uh, Scholz and Merton received the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. Unfortunately, Black uh, had died a couple of years before, so he was not there, but there is no discussion uh, in saying that the prize was meant for the three of them. Now, before entering into the theorem itself, so the Black and Scholz and Merton theorem that allows us to price options, uh, in a very elegant and clever way. And you will see that thanks to what we have seen so far, for us it will be very simple to approach pricing from a probabilistic point of view. Uh, okay, before doing that, we need to introduce the setting. Now, the setting is very simple. So we start by considering a portfolio that only contains two assets. A risk-free asset that can be a zero coupon bond paying a risk-free rate or a money account and a risky asset. The risky asset would be a stock. And the difference, it is clear, for the risk-free asset we will have a deterministic uh, modeling so we know exactly what we can expect from that asset, for what concerns the risky asset, conversely, we need some stochastic modeling. So we will have to specify a stochastic process uh, that allows us to model the stock. We will start from a very basic process that we have already encountered in this course, that is the geometric Brownian motion. We will see that this very basic portfolio composed of a risk-free asset and a risky asset is what we need in order to replicate. So start considering, start remembering this word in order to replicate the value of whatever option that satisfies some very basic conditions we will see later in the course. So with ST, we indicate the value, the price at time T of one share of the risky asset. While with ST0, we indicate the value in T of one unit of the risk-free asset. For what concerns the risk-free asset, we assume the usual deterministic behavior and we also make the further assumption that the value S00, so the price of one unit of the risk-free asset at time 0, is equal to 1, so that at time t, ST0 will be equal to the exponential of R, the risk-free rate, times t. For what concerns the risky asset, we assume that its behavior can be modeled by a geometric Brownian motion with drift mu and diffusion parameter sigma. A question that we can ask ourselves is why do we use a geometric Brownian motion and not other simple stochastic processes like for example the standard Brownian motion or the Brownian motion with drift? There are different reasons for this choice. 
First of all, without any great loss of generality, we can assume prices to be positive quantity or non-negative quantities. Uh, so, sure, I know that we can speak of shadow prices and blah, 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 but these are very specific situations. In general, the price of something is a non-negative quantity. So, playing with the geometric Brownian motion allows us to play with a process that is non-negative. Uh, it is true that for very, very short time uh, horizons, for very, very short periods, we could also play with a burning motion with drift and a burning motion and try to control for the non-negativity of the prices, but for sure, using the geometric burning motion simplifies things a lot. Further, the geometric Brownian motion has interesting properties that are also very useful from a statistical point of view. First of all, we have that the trajectories of the price process, if the price process is a geometric Brownian motion, are almost surely continuous. So we have almost surely continuous path. We also have that the Relative increments, what is the relative increment? Uh, take two different time instants, u and t, with u being smaller than or equal to t. Now, we can define the quantity st minus su over su, and we call this the relative increment. Now, this relative increment, if you want, is nothing more than the return between time t and time U. So it's the return process. Okay, it is easy to verify that the returns, so if I stop my filtration F at time U, the return, that is to say the quantity ST minus SU over SU, is independent from FU, where, and from now on, this is what we want to stress, F T, so the filtration, and in our case, the filtration stopping U, so FU, is the natural filtration generated by the price process. Okay, so if our price process is a geometric Brownian motion, it will be the natural filtration generated by the Brownian motion that we are using. Finally, and this is very, very important, as I already told you in other lessons, we have that if our price process follows a geometric Brownian motion, then the returns, the return process is stationary. And this, from a time series point of view, is extremely important because you will recall from your studies in time series that stationarity is an essential requirement for the predictability and the possibility of modeling of a time series. Now, if we put all these things together, and also trivially, we look at the pattern of prices for different assets, we see that if we simulate a geometric Brownian motion, if we simulate a Brownian motion, if we simulate a Brownian motion with drift, we see that the geometric Brownian motion is the one that performs uh, the best. Uh, later on, we will also add extra uh, analysis that support the use of the geometric brown motion, at least in the very basic uh, Black and Scholes and Merton framework, because you can imagine more advanced and complicated processes can always be uh, thought and used in, in the game. We now consider two very important theorems that are essential for us, and in particular they are fundamental to prove the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem. These two theorems are the Ito representation theorem and the Martingale representation theorem. Now, the first theorem, the Ito representation theorem, is a theorem that we just state without proof, and it's a theorem telling us that if I consider a positive random variable, which is square integrable, and that is measurable with respect to the filtration generated by a Brownian motion, 
then such a positive random variable can be expressed as a stochastic integral that involves the Brown emotion. As a spoiler, I can already tell you that this positive random variable, which is a square integrable and blah, 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 will be the option, will be the security that we want to price. Now, the ETA representation theorem states the following. Let f be a square integrable random variable, then there exists a unique adapted process, f t omega, that satisfies the, this requirement on expectation that you see on your screen, and that should recall for you something that we have seen before, and such that f omega can be represented as the expectation of f plus the ETO integral between zero and capital T of ft omega dbt omega. This representation will prove essential for us. And in particular, what we will see is that the random variable, the square integral random variable that we will consider will be nothing more than the option that we want to price. And depending on the type of the option, we will have a strictly positive or a non-negative random variable. The second theorem, the Martingale representation theorem, is pivotal to play with Brownian Martingales. And we will see that this is the theorem we will exploit in order to verify that in the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem, we can build a strategy that replicates the value of the object of the option that we want to uh, play with. The Martingale representation theorem tells us that if mt is a square integrable Martingale with respect to the natural filtration generated by the Brownian motion over our time horizon zero capital T, then there exists a unique adapted process theta t such that this process satisfies the usual condition about the finite expectation you see on your screen, and for which the martingale mt can be represented as the sum of a value m0 plus an eto integral involving the adapted process theta t. In other words, the integral between 0 and small t of theta s dbs. And this will be true for every t in 0 capital T. The proof of the Martingale representation theorem is quite straightforward once we assume the Ito representation theorem. Now, I leave the proof to you. You can find all the details in the lecture notes, and I wrote the lecture notes, so in a sense, there is not much I can add to such a proof. But if you have questions, if you have doubts, please remember that you can always contact me and ask for clarification. If it is possible, I can answer via email. If I see that the doubts are more profound, then maybe in the next video I can add more details. So take this opportunity. Before closing our lesson, I want to update an important definition that we gave uh, a few lessons ago, that is to say the one of self-financing portfolio. We will do that by stating the definition in continuous time, because our framework, our Black and Scholes and Merton framework, is in continuous time. Uh, after that, we will also introduce some new notation, in particular the notation, the tilde notation, that is the notation that we use for the discounted price process, the discounted value process, because we know and you will see that these objects play a fundamental role in the theory that we are going to approach. And also remember, should not be a surprise, that the fact that we play with discounted quantities comes from the, what we know about the risk-neutral measure. That is to say that under the risk-neutral measure, every discounted price process is a martingale, the value in zero of a portfolio is nothing more than the discounted expected value of the portfolio at maturity. So, in a sense, we have now all the ingredients that we are ready to cook to get our final recipe, which is the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem that represents the starting point 
of the second part of the course, that is to say the part in which we price the different securities, in which we try to enter into the details of pricing, in which we start understanding better, and I hope really better, what are the implications of the change of measure, what are the implications of choosing a process, process instead of another, and so on. And in which we will also start being a little bit more critical about all these kind of things, because some of the assumptions that we have been using so far uh, are not so uh, reliable. So I think it is always better to stress what works and what does not work in our approach. Now, with theta t, we indicate the amount of shares that we have in our portfolio, and this amount can be positive or negative, remember, for what concerns the risky asset. And with theta t0, we indicate the same thing, so the amount of shares that we have in our portfolio, of the risk-free asset. Now, at any time point t, the value of our portfolio will be theta t0 as t0 plus theta t as t. Now, an important thing that we have to notice is the following. The self-financing condition that we stated in equation 2.1 of our lecture notes can be now expressed in continuous time using equation 3.3. By imposing that equation 3.4 holds true almost surely, we are essentially requiring the two adapted processes, theta t0 and theta t, to respect some integrability conditions thanks to which all the integrals we might be interested in, and I'm speaking about the Riemann integrals, but also the Ito integrals, are well defined. Thanks to this condition, we can then state the definition of a self-financing portfolio in continuous time. A useful and interesting uh, proposition is Proposition 13 that plays with the definition of self-financing portfolio to show how it can be restated. And the proof of this proposition, which is not difficult but relevant, is left to you uh, as an exercise. To conclude, and to introduce the tilde notation, from now on, every time we define a stochastic quantity with a tilde on top, we indicate the discounted version of that. So st tilde is equal to e to the minus rt of the price process st. And this discounting is always made with respect to the time at which the price is considered. Given all this notation and the results we have covered so far, we are now ready to introduce the Black and Scholes and Merton theorem that will give us a strategy that will give us the tools to price securities on the market.